Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today a simple tutorial to show you how to improve the render of your spline with Typhoon V-Ray. I will show you how to add line group to your spline to create some randomness in your simulation and to apply to your spline a nice color addition mode and color gradient with beautiful color variation based on the property you want like time, position or other. As usual, you can find the scene on my Patreon. This tutorial will be based on how to improve your spline, so if you want to learn more about spline creation, you can go see the tutorial I've made about it. Okay, let's go. So we are in 3ds Max, and you can see we have here my spline simulation. We will see now the type of setup. I just deactivate all the operator. I keep just the brush spline and the spline pass. And I have in the brush spline a simple circle that I have created previously. You can of course create the shape you want. I change the mode to normalize interpolation and I can play with the percent to increase or decrease the number of particles on my shape. I just create another shape and I pick this shape on my brush plane to show you that the particles are created on her. You can add the number of shapes you want. Okay, I just delete this second shape. And now I activate my force. If I zoom out, you can see how my force affects my particles. We can see the spline generated by the spline path. I just add the slow operator to slow down a little the force and keep my splines together. You can see here the animation. Okay, it's good. You can of course go to the force and play with the turbulence setting, maybe the phase to have the look you want. Play with the strength, play with the scale to really control your spline animation. I don't go into explanation, everything is explained as I told you in the spline world tutorial. Ok, so I just activate my camera to have my final angle and see my spline animation. I can now launch a render and we see here our spline animation. I can go back to the burst and play with the percent setting to really decrease or increase the number of splines. We see here with a value of 0.5, we have a lot of splines, but the render is little boring, it's not interesting. I just decrease my number for the moment, and now we will see the cool part. How to make the simulation really more interesting to watch. We will play with the resample setting, and this is why we generated our spline from a shape, it's because the resample allow you to spawn particle, and it's work really good with spline. So I just created a resample operator to show you. And I set the timing to continuous. If I run a simulation, nothing happened for the moment. It's because we have to go to the interpolate tab and we will play with two settings, the distance and the subdivision. If I put a value of 20, nothing. So 10, it starts to create beautiful light spline group. 7, even better. You can see here the addition mode too. You can, if you want, play with the variation that creates another group here. You can increase the subdivision. Now we have more lines in the group that increase even more the addition mode. You can go back to the brush plane if you want and change the percent of your particle to see how it looks with less or more line. 10, 20. Go back to the resample and decrease the distance. Maybe too much, so I'm going to decrease the con too. You have to play with this, the brush spline and the resample to really create the look you want for your final render. And check how your simulation look on your wall animation. Don't forget of course to enable the glow, it's a really important thing if you want that your animation really shine. We see here that with the glow or animation really pop up, it's beautiful. Ok, now I will show you how to create beautiful material for your spline. So I create a very light material. And I will play it to my tie spline. You can increase the light, maybe two. You can change the color, maybe like this. Don't forget to activate light in backside and multiply color. Okay, not bad, but uh, we don't have the beautiful addition mode we want. So to fix that, I'm going to create a very blend material and link my view light to this material. 
not to the base, but to the coat. I can now just apply this material to my dice plane and activate additive. And now our additional mode material is created. It's really beautiful with the glow. You can of course decrease the intensity of your light, change the color, maybe a violet. Now I will show you how to create beautiful color variation for your spline. I have here the same type of material. I just created a gradient color map for the texture map. And you can see here the gradient I made. Blue to violet to blue. To apply and control the gradient color based on the properties I want, age, frame, time, position, scale, or other, I just have to create a custom property. So I activate it and I set the timing to continuous. For the custom float, I selected time here, but you can select the property you want. But in my opinion, time creates a really cool result. Of course, I create a name for the channel and it's done for the custom property. Now I need to create a mapping operator to apply the value I saved. So I have here my mapping operator, timing to continuous, of course. I select mapping from custom float and I select the channel I have created, here time. And now if I launch a render, we can see that we have now the beautiful gradient color applied to your spline. You can play with the value here to offset the gradient and create the look you want. It's really nice with the glow. You can of course go back to the custom property and change the custom float to test different property. I like to use a position magnitude too. And yes, that creates a result a bit different, but one more time, really beautiful with the glow. We have here a nice color variation. It's up to you to play with the setting I showed you. Change the color, the custom float, play with the values to really create the look you want for your render. To finish, just uh, two quick tips. You can go to the tie spline measure and in the radius tab, you can play with the taper if you want to change the thickness of your spline for the start or for the end. Here you can see the difference with the linear taper. The tip of my spline are bigger. So if you want a final start or end for your spline, you can play with a setting like this. And if you want to control the life of your spline, you can go to tight spline and in the spine tab, you can see the max age setting. I just close all and you can play here with the value to control the life you want to your spine animation. Okay guys, so it's over for this tutorial. Don't forget the thumb up if you like the tutorial and to subscribe to my channel. You can of course follow me on Instagram and beyond and you have the Patreon if you want to support me. Take care guys and see you soon for our next tutorial. Bye.